Welcome back. We're going to get back to the house build soon, but today we need to replace the sliding glass door at the cabin. First thing to mention is that Justine is spending a week with one of her college girlfriends, so she's away for the week, and this is a surprise uh, so that it'll be done when she gets back. This door is uh, it's, it's original to the cabin. Uh, it's more than 30 years old, um, has no insulation value, and it ends up uh, uh, catching uh, uh, so that the door doesn't operate smoothly. The mechanisms um, at the bottom meant for adjusting don't work well anymore. Um, so there's just a lot of uh, a lot of good reasons to get rid of it. As you can see, the cabin is board and batten, so just removed the the framing and the trim around uh, the door itself. This is definitely one of those jobs where if you have an extra pair of hands, uh, another person to help you, it certainly makes it a lot easier. Uh, but if you don't, just figure it out. Um, the most difficult part for me was just unloading it from the truck uh, and getting it uh, through the house uh, and out on the deck uh, so that I could get ready to install it. Uh, I ended up taking um, the sliding door out of the frame to reduce the weight of the overall piece, uh, but it's certainly doable. The first step, of course, is finding all of the areas where the sliding glass door is connected to the frame. So in this case, it was mostly just small nails uh, that were used. Uh, again, it's a, it's a, was done more than 30 years ago. Uh, didn't have too much trouble. Uh, found most of them uh, pretty quickly. Um, there was a little bit of uh, insulation, great stuff insulation, which I was happy to see. Uh, but other than that, uh, not much uh, in the way of um, insulation. Because we're just adding this sliding glass door to the cabin. I didn't want to put anything too expensive in, so this is a pretty inexpensive um, option. Uh, this is Reliabilt. Uh, it was about $470. Uh, and, uh, you know, that comes with its own issues, uh, which I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. This particular door comes with nail flanges around all four sides. Uh, so this is one of the things I had to think about as we were uh, replacing the old one, uh, the old aluminum frame frame didn't have nail flanges. Uh, you'd nail directly through the aluminum uh, to the uh, studs uh, on either side. Um, what this really meant was that the door was going to be uh, set out a little bit uh, than the original door was. Uh, I could have removed the uh, the board uh, of the board and batten um, around where the flange is and, and set it in uh, another half inch. But at the end of the day, it, it didn't make that much difference. And that added a lot more work for not a lot more gain. So I ended up just uh, using the nail flanges directly to the board uh, that exists there, uh, which will give me about a half inch gap uh, on the inside uh, of the house, which I'll just, you know, uh, fill in with insulation, uh, great stuff, and then also uh, with a little bit of wood trim. Here I'm adding a blocking uh, to the right hand side. Um, the other piece is that this door was fairly well centered in this space, um, and I don't want it to be centered, so I'm going to right justify it. As you are looking at it from the inside of the house. Here I'm just adding uh, flashing uh, all around, uh, flashing tape. It's not very expensive. Uh, it's definitely a good thing to do. Uh, I would have liked uh, a wider version of the tape, but they didn't have it in the uh, in the store when I was there. So I just got uh, this narrower tape and, and doubled it up uh, so that we had good coverage uh, around all four sides. Because of the blocking that I put in on the right side, I just chose to do the flashing around that blocking. I could have put in a full stud here, but I really wanted the insulation value from the great stuff uh, rather than creating um, too narrow of a, of a space to properly insulate, uh, which is one of the reasons I went that way. Um, also, right justifying it um, gives me that uh, additional ability to secure the nail flange properly on the side of the door that you open so that that's the most secure. Uh, and then that blocking will catch enough nails on the, on the right side as you're looking at it from the outside here uh, to make it stable. And then, of course, all, all of the top uh, and the bottom will be um, secured as well. 
So now I'm just adding some liquid nails uh, over the flashing. Um, this is what the door will sit on. Um, I'm putting an entire tube of liquid nails in there just to catch it. Uh, like I said, it won't sit uh, fully in there, but um, it is, uh, it's enough to get it where it needs to be. And then when I add the sill board underneath, um, that'll provide additional uh, stability and support uh, as well. So now I'm getting ready to reinstall the door. Uh, this is the part that you won't have to do if you have two people. Um, but it also gives you an opportunity to look at the adjustment mechanisms at the bottom of the door, make sure everything's set correctly. Um, if you don't know, there's a screw on either side of the door at the bottom that elevates and lowers the, the wheels that, that, that hang on the track. And that way you can adjust uh, the height and the position within the frame. Uh, so you can make sure it rolls correctly and closes square. This is the handle um, that we put on. And I mentioned this is not an expensive model. Uh, the problem with this mechanism is that if you screw the handles um, too tight, it can actually compress that locking mechanism so that it doesn't work smoothly. So you have to make sure you don't put too much pressure on it. I added some Loctite to the screws to make sure that it wouldn't be a problem, um, but uh, you do have to be careful about that. So now I'm removing the bottom nail flange uh, because it just doesn't do me any good. It's hanging about an inch away from the... Uh, edge of the board underneath that I flashed. Uh, and so this will allow a nice clean uh, fit for the sill board as I put that in. Um, here I'm realizing that the the deck is a little bit bowed because the deck is going to need to be replaced. Again, it's uh, original to the house uh, and has settled over time. This is the half inch gap I was talking about. It's pretty uniform all the way around. I'll go back and fill the bottom, the top, and the right side here with uh, great stuff windows and doors. And then on the far side, on the left side, I will fill that with the big gap filler because there's some two or three inch uh, spaces in there. Uh, and then I'll just trim it all back and add a small piece of wood trim and, and we'll be done. Um, painter's tape's amazing. You know, cut the great stuff uh, from two different directions and it'll peel right off and you'll have a good clean connection. Uh, I forgot to put it on the door side and had to clean that up a little bit. So uh, next time I'll remember to do it all the way around. But that's about it. Um, this whole thing took me about four, four to six hours over two days, uh, just so I could let the great stuff cure. Uh, it was about seven hundred dollars. Uh, the door, as I mentioned, was about four seventy, four eighty. The screen insert was another hundred, and then about forty or fifty dollars worth of parts, including the great stuff and the flashing. Um, so not too bad. Uh, happy to have it done. It makes living here uh, a little bit nicer. While we are building the house on the other property. Thanks a lot. See you next time.